on this episode of This Old Subaru. It's time to change out this passenger side strut with a used strut. Oh my God, he's going cheap again. I had to. I'll explain later, it's too windy. Okay, well, here we are in the garage. Here's the used one I picked up at a junkyard, a uh, salvage yard. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this particular yard, but it's one where you pick your own parts off cars that have been junked out for whatever reason. So, believe it or not, I got these bolts out without the assistance of PB Blaster. Note to self, start bringing PB Blaster to the salvage yard if you're gonna pull parts because it probably would have made things a little bit easier on these puppies. Uh, the top ones came out fairly easy. For some reason, it seems like I've got two 12 meter, millimeters and one 13 millimeter nut. I'll have to see on the original if that's normal or did somebody swap that out. But anyway, it doesn't look that great looking at it. I could always throw some paint on it and make it look terrific. But what I was looking for is whether or not there was any fluid leaking around the seal, which there isn't. It's a bit rusty, it's a bit dirty, but there's no leak, unlike the one in the Subaru right now, which is leaking. And when I go down the road, a bumpy road, with that strut uh, in uh, such terrible condition, the front passenger wheel bounces over the bumps as though it was a basketball, just dribbling over the bumps. Duh, 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 duh. So it's very annoying. Uh, it affects the handling somewhat also. So it's time to swap that one out with one that isn't leaking, still has its gas charge and all the fluid in there to cushion the bumps. That's what I'm up to today. And since the car, you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you get a new one? And I'd have to compress the spring with a spring compressor or have somebody do it because I don't have a spring compressor here in the, in the garage. Also, the price of a new one, which isn't horrible, but I just want to spend that kind of money because this Subaru has 235,000 miles on it. I don't know how much longer it's going to last. I don't want to put a brand new strut in there or both sides even and then find out uh, 100 miles down the road that the motor's pooched. So that's why I'm going with this used part instead of a new one. Forgive me, but that's what I gotta do. And since I haven't checked the oil in the little compressor in a while, I checked it, and it's a bit low. Uh, it's right there. Max mark or full is right there. So I'm gonna add a pinch more compressor fluid to it and then get underway. Okay, she's all good after adding some all season select lubricant from Ingersoll Rand. What is this stuff really? What, what is this stuff, huh? I don't know. If anybody knows what that stuff is, let me know. Okay, the pressure is at just under 80. I'm gonna pull the pressure relief valve and see if there's any water in the bottom of the tank because that's been a while since I've emptied that as well. So here goes, you wanna plug your ears. Okay, what do we got? Oh, yeah, there's a little pond under there. There was some. Oh, if only I had this baby with me in the salvage yard to get that stuff ripped apart really quick. It took me about, I don't know, a half an hour fussing around, but that uh, wasn't too bad. I want to loosen these up. I've got the wheels chalked. she be and as the people at the salvage yard mentioned I pick a nice day to do this I think I've got a shot of the thermometer on the porch yep 90 degrees humidity probably 90 percent hundred I don't know it's awful humid here it is July 3rd and I can't be riding around on the nation's birthday July 4th on a strut that's bouncing up and down like a basketball. <coughs> nice sound, isn't it? <coughs> okay. All right, well, let me bring you on in here. 
goodness gracious. In a, well, here's your problem moment, this thing is just covered with the oil that was once on the inside of the strut. So if your strut looks like this, it's beyond replacing. You should have already had it replaced, and I should have too. This thing is a royal mess. Might have to dig out the rubber gloves for this uh, removal, because that is, yeah, that's some nastiness right there. Oh, isn't that nice how my green carpet reflects in the uh, rotor? Um, so here's the deal. I've got my AC Delco jack stands, which still have the tag on them. I got at a yard sale. It says uh, jack stands, $10 a pair. I <laughs> think I got my money's worth so far. Anyway, I got that in place because I've got to lower the car down on this side and jack up the other side because, let's go over here because if I don't raise up the car and take some weight off the driver's side tire, this sway bar is going to be pulling up on this rigging to try to level it up with the other side. And I might not get all of the spring release that I need to remove the strut. So I'm thinking on theory, I haven't done this before, but it seems to me that if I jack up the other side until the tire just comes off the ground, uh, this sway bar will be taken out of the equation and I can just go ahead and remove the strut without much interference Okay It's got the full weight I'll jack up this side. All right, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to mark this where that it is so oily But I want to mark this top bolt because this adjusts what is it, the camber of the front wheel? It's uh, an ob round, ob shaped uh, bolt so that as this turns, it can move the top of this in and out for proper alignment. Since I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close to proper alignment, I want to just mark the top of the bolt here, which looks to be this point just about straight up. Okay, and I'll put a little line in here, up and down, best I can. It's kind of moving around a bit too, with an arrow if I can, that side up. All right, even though these nuts and bolts are pretty oily, I'll still hit it with some PB, try to loosen things up. The same socket, 19 millimeter, that takes off the lug nuts, also fits these guys in here. So let's see what happens. So far a big nothing. All right. Which means I'll have to use my Junker torque wrench. It's got the black paint on it and I've got it set to 150 foot-pounds. I'll have to use this to break that free. This is what I used in the salvage yard too. And it took most of my weight, but those were pretty rusty. These here, at least they're oily on the outside. Maybe that's not how they look on the inside. And that's why they're fighting the impact gun. Let's see what happens here. And there it goes. Okay. There goes that first one. Now if we can get the top one to cooperate. Yep. There it goes. They just need to be there. They just needed to be loosened up for the impact driver to do its business. Let's see now. There it goes. Whew. She spun right off there, 100 miles an hour. All right. And I got a washer down here. And it looks like there's another washer up top. At least there should be. Yeah. There it is. All right. I'll spin the top one out in a moment first. I need the 12, I believe, 12 millimeter. Take off the ABS sensor wire. Okay, there goes the ABS 
sensor retainer, the ABS wire, and also I've got the brake line loose that was zip tied onto the other side because the bolt had been sheared off at the head. A sheared off bolt. Now let's zip off the top bolt here. Now, there we go. There's the nut. There's the washer. All right, I got the nut threaded back onto the bolt here. I just want to use it to tap this through. There it goes. It's not too bad. It'll probably come out on its own. A little more on it. Okay. That should come right out. And the top one. You. Look at the whole thing rocking back and forth. It's really loose right here because it's it's only thick on this end not on this end where are my marks there's my marks there's the top right there there's my arrow pointing up I barely see it but it's there I believe all I have to do is get this bottom one out but I'm gonna wait I'm gonna see do I have another jack stand I want to see if I got my other one haha <laughs> jack stand we don't need no stinking jack stand got a 12 ton bottle jack. The question is, will it fit? Yeah, a little. Not real much here. Not real much, he says. It's like it will go up into this hole over here, though. Um, I am just going to place it under here in such a way that if this arm comes down, it won't go down too far. And hopefully I won't have too hard of a time getting it to go back up and cooperate okay and that's the plan okay here we are top side and as far as I know I need the 12 millimeter socket and what do you know all three of these are 12 millimeter why I had a 13 millimeter on the other one I don't know but uh, let's give these a shot of fluid just to make life a little easier. Maybe they'll cooperate. Whoops. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Let's see. So far, so good. All right. Two down. One more, and she should be just about free. I vote that someday I get the privilege of buying a bigger air compressor and not dealing with little tiny over there anymore. Okay, so here we go. It's all loose. It's ready to drop right down out of there as soon as I remove the bottom bolt. So let's go back down to the bottom. I would just need something to punch this bolt out. There we go. There. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. It's moving. Being careful with the axle here. Don't want to tear the boot. There we go. Okay. Now, is this going to stay here on its own? I hope so. But for now, let's get this oily beast out of here. Ugh, God. Messy thing. All right, get it underneath. There we go, under the ABS wire. And top freaking die. It is a mess. Now we're ready on this 90 degree day to grunt and groan and get it back up in there. Got on my get her done pants, of course. Maybe while you were staring at my rear end, um, maybe I'll edit that out. I put the three nuts on the three stud posts so it's holding the strut in place, suspending it there. Now I can try to line up the bottom. Get those bolts back in on the bottom. And 
it is a tight fit. Start it up a little bit. There, there, it's kind of sliding into place a little. side now instead of a zip tie. Where is that bolt? Right here. Top side. Let's bring it up a little bit. Okay. Make sure it's centered. And oh, that's right. I reused the 13. Okay, I'll get the 13 in a second. Let's get these other ones with the 12s. Okay. Just bring it up a little bit. The oddball number 13. Now it's time to lower the driver's side, jack up the passenger side, put the wheel back on. I think we're, we're done. I think we've got a successful uh, transplant here. Okay, so here again is the top bolt that, if you can see it, yeah. thanks compressor. Okay, so if you can see, there's a th thicker part up here on the bolt. It's not completely round. It has like a shoulder on it that you can really see down here now as I turn it. See how it's got a cutout in it right there. So that's what helps to adjust the proper camber on the car with the wheel tilted in or out perpendicular to the road. That's how it's adjusted is by where this bolt is positioned. So that's why it was important for me to try to get uh, the orientation of the bolt before I took it out so I can hopefully put it back that way. Time to go take it for a test drive and find out after I lower it down and torque the front wheel nuts. Go for a little ride, take out the wheel chocks in the back. I don't want to run those over. All right, well. Tire pressures have been checked. There's a sticker inside the driver's side door that lists the tire sizes and the air pressure, PSI and 
whatever the other kilo something is. Um, it's 30 pounds PSI in the front, 29 for the rear tires. I just checked, that's what they're set at. It's a 90 degree day, so might be a little warm for an exact reading, but that's going to be as high as it's going to be on a 90 degree day. Uh, the pressures are bound to go down a little bit on a cooler day. But time to take it for a test drive, see how this new strut is working out or not. That's right. Going for a test drive in my get her done pants. Hey, made it back. Test drive is a success. No more dribbling passenger side wheel like a basketball. It's riding great. Get yourself some get her done pants and get her done. <laughs>